Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of our conversations that we're having uh, with folks around the country focused on experiential education, um, internships, co-ops, all that great stuff, and some of the great things that are happening across the country. I am joined today uh, by Ashley Birdwhite at, and Aaron Mullen from, if you guessed it, the University of South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Oh, my pleasure. We are really excited about not just sharing best practices, but really having conversations around what is going on in the experiential education world. And I know having visited the University of South Carolina multiple times over the last couple of years, you guys are moving and shaking it. And that is awesome. And I'm so glad that you uh, took some time this morning to visit with us about this. So, you know, tell us a little bit about your initiatives to engage the campus in what you're calling the Career Champions Initiative. Yeah, so I'll start. Um, so our Career Champion program uh, started about two years ago uh, in October of 2017. Um, and really, it came after thinking about scalability as most career centers in higher education are trying to do and um, really getting us to think about how can we serve students that we may never see. Um, and knowing that we have 34,000 students um, and our staff just, even if every student wanted to come to the Career Center, we would not be able to, to serve them, right? They all showed up. So um, we know that. We know that um, organically these conversations are happening. Students are going to go to a faculty member. They're going to go to their supervisor on campus. They're going to talk to their academic advisor, uh, a, a student org advisor about, you know, when should I do an internship? What should I do with my career? Um, all these things. And so we we looked at the scalability. We looked at, take, you know, really just thinking about why should we be the gatekeepers of certain information? And why shouldn't we just, you know, act, share all this knowledge that we have and best practices because at the end of the day it's all about serving the student regardless of who gives them that information and so true yeah and so um you know it, it allows us to uh provide um uh, common messaging and language around career readiness employability best practices um, and again, empowers, I think that's the other piece, empowering faculty staff to have conversations with students. Don't be afraid to talk to them about what they're going to do after they leave USC and how can they best prepare for that right now. So we've had, um, I think, almost 250 uh, people go through the Career Champion training. Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Two, 250 yeah, people, yeah. administrators, faculty, uh, on, on your campus yes. go through the training yes yeah so wow. that's pretty yeah so we're, yeah um, and so it's a three-hour training um, they come in it's very interactive it's very reflective and it gets them thinking about how can they best serve their student um, it talks we talk about career development theory we talk about um, ethics uh, we talk about helping we talk about all sorts of things um, and then with Aaron's expertise, we added a level two because what we found in our assessments is that our faculty and staff really wanted to learn more about the internship and experiential learning process. We hear that all the time. The students know that they need to do an experience. The faculty and staff want them to do that. And, but a lot of people don't know how to even get that started or how to talk with their student about that. So we created a level two career champion training Erin played a huge role on that, um, and she's our assistant director for experiential education. And so we have added a level two, um, which goes into really getting at how can I, as a faculty or staff member, help a student before an experience, whether that's finding, finding an internship or experience, what should I be looking for, um, where do I want to go, what do I want to do, um, during that experience and so you know what you know how can I best support my student with reflection maybe it's sending them an email question every week um, or encouraging them to journal or whatever the case may be um, and then after so how can I help them understand and articulate what they just did um, and what does that mean 
for future opportunities. So building on that. So you, had, um, and, you had 250 go through kind of that initial training where yeah. you know, some, some kind of career services, let's call it basics, uh, yep. some, you know, the things that they absolutely positively need to know. And then there was this demand for this level two. How many, how many folks have made it to that level two? I believe, so we've done three, um, three trainings with that. And I believe that we have around 45 that have done that over the three. So we just rolled that up at the end of spring last year. I always find it amazing that when when others outside of the career services world are touched by what we do, they really get excited about it and they want to do more of it. So I, I think yeah. you guys have absolutely tapped in to that because let's face it, we, we're all in higher education because we want to help students make this transition to the next phase of their life. And when we engage those that are outside of our typical bubble, uh, I you know, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And so a couple of things I think really with Career Champions as well is, um, and we just went through, uh, we just did our staff retreat with the Career Leadership Collective. So we had um, someone come in and really help us think strategically about scalability and about really creating an ecosystem. Career is everywhere, as it should be. Our students are engaging in career-ready topics every day um, in and out of the classroom. And so um, we have a lot more work that we want to do and, and we're getting there. But I think the Career Champion Program has really started to get the ball rolling on this culture of career, career readiness, integrating. Um, what we're, I, again, I think what we're seeing with the, with the generation of students that's coming into college uh, and universities now, there's even much more conversation before they get to us. Yeah. So yeah. It, I think it really challenges us in a historic model that, that we that we meet them where they are, not where we are, and, and right. they're yes. in a different place. And so it sounds like what you're doing is trying to create this um, ecosystem mm -hmm. that meets the student where they are when they get there. Right. Right, because they're gonna, I mean, a career topic is gonna come up at any point in time. Um, you know, and and even before my role in the Career Center, I worked in student life, and I would have my students, like work study students that I supervised, ask me, did you, you know, I'm thinking about an internship, what should I do? And they were asking me, they weren't going to the Career Center because I'm right there, you know, right. and, and students don't necessarily see the, the offices, they see you are the university and I trust you and so you should know how to help me. And so now well, we've- Doesn't that kind of go back to the, the, the basic law of, of business and that is location, location, location? Yeah. Yes. And you know, yep. your location on a campus, and again, you know, students do think that we're all one big office a, a lot of times. Yeah, and yes, you, absolutely. The way that you, the, the way that you can uh, engage those folks to, to have that common messaging, gosh, that, I can only imagine what the long-term ramifications of that are going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's also educating our faculty, staff. So many of them think we do resumes and job fairs, just like our students. And so it is a great opportunity for us to highlight some of the other things that we do help students with because how can a faculty or staff member refer a student that is looking for an experiential education opportunity or looking to figure out you know, a career path when they might not know that that's what we do? So Very it's also true. kind of changing the way that others see our office on campus. And, that is, and, and again, uh, you, know, you guys know that I travel the country on a pretty regular basis, meet with Career Center folks all the time, and that is you know, the number one, you know, we were playing Family Feud, and the question was, what does career services do? The number one answer on every college campus is, oh, they write resumes and resumes, job fairs, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, breaking that mold and breaking that um, that per, that that per, perception. Uh, yeah. That's that's hard work, and it sounds like you guys are really digging in on that. So, how do internships and experiential education come into play with the Career Champions Initiative? Yes, so like Ashley mentioned, we really walk them through in an engaged activity where they have to think about what are the best things that I should be preparing my students for 
uh, as I'm talking to an advisee or I'm talking to one of my peer educators or even one of my students in my classes, what should they know before their experience, what should they know during and then after. But we have the attendees of the Career Champion Level 2 actually go through that process themselves. So they have to be thinking, what would I like, what would I um, would have known prior that I would have appreciated? What would be some good actions that I can facilitate with my student during their opportunity? And then how can I lead that discussion for the future when they come back? Um, so we have it very actively engaged for them. Um, we talk about all, all logistics, such as preparation of an ex internship or experiential education opportunity. Um, we talk about some more of the harder logistics, such as Title IX and sexual harassment, and what to do if a student encounters something in their workplace environment or off-site environment, um, and what are the best practices that they can do and the resources that they can give their student. That's fantastic. So what type of interaction are you having? So we've talked so far about kind of what we're doing on campus to engage the faculty, the administration, to really create this uh, common messaging and just really a, um, a a culture of preparation for the next phase of their life. So what type of interaction or outreach are you engaged with employers or community partners in reaching out about what you're doing with the career check initiative? I would say um, our, our employer relations team, like like our office overall, we're, we're around, surrounding a corner this year. Um, we have a new leadership in place, so we have a, a lot of new directives, um, and we're excited about the opportunities ahead. But specifically for our employer relations folks who meet and engage with employers directly one-on-one -on -one or in groups, um, having them work with students or get in touch with students on a more informal basis, because we've done the traditional information sessions. We know that they're not working for our population that we have right now. But how can we get them engaged in talking about their opportunities, talking about their internships in informal settings? So um, we want to give props out to our team here. They've really worked hard with our satellite office for engineering and computing, our career center and college, to have and establish more of those informal conversations. Um, but also selling when we work with an employer organization for an internship, giving them the best practices prior so once we know that they're in their recruitment cycle or that they've um, hired and uh, hired a student for the upcoming semester, we give them that educational um, information that we give our career champions. So some of the best practices that we've learned from you and others in the field, leaders, about how to best form and structure their internships, how to give students the information where they are. Um, and in a format that they can digest and also receive the best benefits from as well. And that's one of the biggest frustrations I hear from uh, folks in our in our profession. And that is that you know it's really really frustrating when we prepare a student and we you know, they're they're ready to go out and do this internship or co-op or some type of experiential learning activity, and they come back and they're disappointed because. The employer wasn't as engaged or didn't, and I know that you guys know that I love the word structure, uh, but really the, the didn't provide them a structured experience that met them where they are. Um, and, you know, as we see in the literature, you know, the employers tend to be the forgotten partner a lot of times in doing this. Um, it sounds like by engaging them in some of the same things that you're talking about with your career champions on campus, we're again continuing to meet the student where they are, it benefits really everybody, doesn't it? Yeah. It benefits the student, most likely, and, and I'd love to see some longitudinal data on this at the University of South Carolina, but my gut tells me that your, your retention rates are gonna go up, your persistence to graduation rates are gonna go up, and probably time to graduation is going to go down. Yes. Again, those are all outcomes that the university would be, would, would be interested and then for the employer's perspective, that amazing talent pipeline of well-prepared individuals to hit the ground running. Right. Well, and I'll also say, too, actually tomorrow we will have our first go at level three, which is going to focus on, um, I know we're very excited, so this will be level three. And again, it's coming out of faculty staff saying we want more training. We want more information to help our student. And so that's 
that's a great thing. So level three is going to focus on the NACE core competencies okay. and get faculty staff thinking about, um, you know, what can I do to best have, you know, prepare or best um, prepare students for, um, you know, the world of work with the NACE core competencies. And on the, in addition to that, you know, how, you know, there's one thing to say, let's just introduce them to the competencies, let's talk about how you can get students to exercise those competencies, but we're also adding in exercises for them, to, for the faculty, staff to understand the reflection component, articulating those competencies to employers. Um, and we talk about the, um, the NACE Outlook survey and how employers are saying, you know, students aren't necessarily, there's a skills gap here. Yeah. And so it's really getting faculty staff to be aware of that because they want, I mean, everybody that I've ever talked to, faculty staff, they want to, to have our students be as most successful as they can. They want them ready and they want to prepare for, or help them prepare, but sometimes they just don't know how because this is our world and we're right. help, we're bringing them in because it's also their world too. They just, they're, they're learning that that's, that it is. So no, you're um, absolutely right. I mean, one, one of the, uh, the two, uh, I think it was 2014, uh, Inside Higher Ed did a, did a study that said that 96% of provosts and presidents said that their students graduating were, were uh, work ready uh, or ready to, to, to hit the workforce, but yet only 33% of CEOs and chief human resources officers agreed with that same statement. Yeah. So yeah. There, there is that gap. And yeah. you know, as a as a uh, uh, an adjunct faculty member myself, I know like for example, this past term I taught negotiations and conflict. And in it I embedded each of those NACE core competencies that or the career readiness competencies and I I really think that the students are better prepared. Yes. To, to go out and, and actually one of my students, she actually um, senior graduating at, you know, this was her last class and um, she interviewed with a company, applied some of the things we talked about and on the last night of class, told everybody that she got the job offer and everybody just stood yeah. up and applauded. Uh, so again, embedding them into a curriculum, into a course, it could be, you know, I taught negotiations and conflict, it could be really any course you could embed some of those things in. Mm -hmm. So to wrap us up, uh, you guys are doing some amazing things at the University of South Carolina. I, I'm wondering now if there's a stage four, five, six, seven. I mean, what I find interesting about what you're doing is that it, 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 it's organically happening. You started with an idea and that was the stage one thing, but then the demand was there and you said, well, wait a minute, I, I guess we should have a stage two. Yeah. And there's demand for that. And then it's, wait a minute, people want more. So, yeah. and that, that's a really good place to be. Um, yeah. So what positive trends have you seen in this experiential learning internship space uh, that, that you see are really positive? Well, I would say um, one new venture that we have this coming year is um, we partnered with our College of Arts and Sciences here at the University of South Carolina. So we know that the majority of students that historically have gone through formal internships, and we're talking full-time, have been yielding from our college's um, engineering as well as our school of business. Um, but we focused a lot on our liberal arts students and the value of internships and opportunities outside in the workplace for them. So um, our career center has partnered with their College of Arts and Sciences to establish a satellite um, center of excellence in their one of their academic buildings. So it'll be a full functioning scope um, for academic advising, study abroad, um, career services, as well as internships. So we're hoping to get more face time with those students um, to help leverage um, the conversations that we've had with their leadership about the value of internships. So um, more will be coming about serving College of Arts and Sciences students with internships um, and really establishing that value with organizations and employers as well as their, um, their faculty and staff. That's one of the biggest things that I see as I talk with employers is this, um, this almost awakening of, hey, these liberal arts students, they've got some skills. Mm -hmm. Like they're really employable and they communicate well and they, they're really good at projects and, and 
all of these things. And, you know, we all sit back and go, well, yeah, hey, welcome to the party. We've been there for years. Um, but I think that reawakening is beneficial because I don't think that there's too many college campuses where the College of Arts and Sciences isn't the largest college on their campus in terms of student population. So right, yes. your ability to reach into the college, I love the, the, uh, uh, the word that you use, face time. You know, being present and being there and being visible, so very important to help our students make this transition to the next world of work. So with that, any closing thoughts as we wrap up our conversation today? We, um, we trust that your insight um, and we appreciate the time and hope that we can help others in the field yeah. as well as learn from the learn from them. Yeah, very, I mean, there's, I think it's a great time to be in career mm -hmm. services right now. There are so many awesome things happening. There's so many possibilities. Um, and and so we, we love what we get to do all, all, you know, every day. And so we look forward to all all that's to come and, and working with you more and, and following your work as well. Well, thank you very much. And I, I would not be surprised if your uh, email address, email boxes aren't blowing up after folks uh, <laughs> watch this because I, they're going to be coming, you know, people are going to be coming to you and saying, okay, how did you do this? And I think that, uh, what we talked about today is such a fantastic primer. And this can happen on any campus. I mean, yes, University of South Carolina, you have 34,000 plus students, but something like this could very easily happen on a small campus of really any population because it's about right, yeah. making those meaningful connections. It's about sharing information and yeah. bringing others into into our tent. I, I, right. That kind of sounds a little hokey, but um, you know, that that's that's what it is, and we need yeah. to expand in order to scale and in order to serve the students of today and tomorrow much better. So, Ashley, Aaron, thank you so much for the work that you do. Uh, I don't think that, that uh, uh, you get enough pats on the back for the things that you're doing on your campus. Uh, I've been able to watch you all evolve for the last you know, 10 years or so uh, through relationships that I've had with folks at USC. And I tell you what, it is amazing. You're leading the pack and I'm just, could not be more proud of the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We will see you again next time. Take care.